Hey, good morning everyone. It's Maggie Bot here with the Board Game Vlog. And the last couple weeks we've been playing a heck of a lot of two games that I wanted to talk a little bit more about. Um, you may have seen I was filming a Crosswagon um, vlog last weekend and then we played two very amazing games of it and we kind of we got to the point in the game where we had a really nice discussion about it and I, after having that discussion I thought, oh wow, I I do need to update the vlog. There's so much more going on and more that we kind of talked out where I could put my thoughts into words. Um, so Crosswagon, again, Matthias Kramer, good stuff, awesome, awesome. Um, so he made this game and the Rondell mechanism is neat and obviously because it's Matthias Kramer, sorry, set that down, because it's Matthias Kramer and because he is so famous for Glenmore, uh, there was a million comparisons to it. And unfortunately, the two games are apples and oranges. Uh, Glenmore is about the one or two times in the game where you really have to jump ahead and take a castle. And it's really about not overspending, not taking too many tiles, making sure that you, you know, one-up the other people. Because the scoring in, in Glenmore, if you haven't played it, um, you compare yourself against the person that's doing the worst in different categories. And so it's a comparison game, and it's the direct competition is just different. Um, so when you get to Croftwagen, it has a rondelle, um, so that was the one thing, the action selection was kind of similar to Glenmore, but actually it was much more similar to Shipyard, um, in that there are a set number of actions, and um, when you take one, it goes to the end of the line, so you're kind of reordering them. Um, so Croftwagen has kind of lesser or minor actions, uh, medium actions where you get two different things, and one uh, where you get three different things. And it's never bad in this game to take extra actions. You can just, as soon as someone gives you some extra space, you can just scoop up as many as possible. Because it's really, there, there's nothing, there's no downside. Whereas Glenmore, you were definitely incentivized not to take extra actions if you could. You wanted to make a nice small village, and if you took an extra tile from other people, it'd be worth more points than you were going to lose for having the extra tiles at the end. Um, so, Croft Dragon, um, in the game you are building cars and trying to sell them to customers, and you are upgrading a race car and racing around the track. Uh, so, when we started playing, we thought, okay, there's going to be a racing strategy and a car strategy. But no, this is closer to Rococo, where... This is a game about making cars, so without making cars you can't actually win. Um, so the racetrack, uh, if you go around it and you come in first, you get seven points at the end of round. And if you loop it, uh, I think it's six times or so, you get an extra seven points. So you're maxing out in a three round game, 14 points per round, if you can do that all the way from the beginning of the game. And selling cars is just simply more points than that. So we very much decided that there is a little car spammy strategy with a, with racing as your main focus so that you are gumming up the works and kind of shoving cars into the market to speed up the rounds because the rounds being sped up is kind of advantageous to you and then making sure that you've optimized your racetrack. And then there's another strategy which is big points, big big sales, um, trying to get the guy that gives you the fifth buyer and double just a crazy something, trying to maximize all the points in the in selling cars. And you can't decide before you start which of those two that you're going to do. Um, it's, it's usually going to be up to the first couple pieces of tech you have access to. So if your tech is telling you that you're going to be able to get high engines, then you can upgrade race cars. But without being able to do that or without getting the guy that gives you like double movements on the racetrack, you probably don't want to go for that strategy. So I, part of the game is going to be evaluating in the first couple rounds what is available to you and taking advantage of that. Um, so <laughs> that's my entire craft wagon rant. Um, what I will say is that it definitely has a place in my library for a while. Um, it will probably get uh, about five or six more plays here in the in the first couple months and then we'll just bring it out whenever we feel like playing the game. Uh, it's m way it's perfect at three or four players. The two player experience wasn't great um, but that's okay too. I, it doesn't need to be great at two players. Um, next up, so uh, I know I've talked about this before 
Um, but we've played a lot of it now. Um, I'm in my fifth or sixth play. I, I guess that's not a lot, a lot, but it's it's a fair amount. So Django or Zango <laughs> pronunciation is hard. Why can't phonetic on the bottom? But um, so this is a what's your game game from a couple years ago. Uh, we saw it at Essen last year. I guess it was one year ago. Time flies, you know. Um, and this game has one of the coolest card mechanics. Uh, you are trying to play these cards in a specific order where you're, if you play lower or higher than another card, you might be able to activate powers that you've talked before. Um, just a really interesting use of cards. And so if any of my watchers know of another game that has a similar mechanic, please let me know. But I've never experienced that before. And uh, we played a few more times, and we've definitely decided that it's another one. Actually, same criticism of, as Croft Wagon. You can't build just any strategy. You can't say, I'm going to spam at all the walls and make sure that they're really good and then, you know, use temples secondary. You have to wait to see what your cards will give you because you can't, you won't always have cube bonuses. You won't always have wall bonuses. You'll have whichever ones come up in your hand. And I've definitely played games without a single worker action bonus. And so the, the strategy has to change depending on what you get. Uh, so that, I think, is where people are getting that kind of unbalanced critique from it. Uh, because they want to be able to build any strategy. They want it to be a feld where uh, at the beginning of Trajan you just say, well, I'm going to do blah, blah, blah. Um, because there's so little randomness in that game, you can choose a strategy and just do whatever you want to. Um, games like this where there is card draw and there is a little more of a tactical nature, you have to let the cards tell you what's possible and do the best at that strategy. Um, so I really like this game. This game is really neat. Um, it plays well at all player counts. We've, we've not had a bad game of it. I, I was told at the very beginning when I was learning the game that it was best at two, but I think I like three better. Um, I like I like the fact that you're really going to get screwed at, over by the, the card, the numbers, uh, a lot more often in three players and four players, um, because it is the fun kind of frustration. It's just the, the, really, did you just play 110? I have 109 in my hand. You know, it just it's one of those things. Um, it's a really great game and under undervalued at this point, but I'm sure it'll sell over time. It's just how those kind of heavy games go. Um, a friend of mine has... A copy of Asgard, and so I never really played it a lot, even though it was definitely on my list of games I'd probably like. Uh, so when he gets back from Comic Con, I'm gonna try and get a couple games of that in. Um, so uh, last, oh boy, can I hit the microphone? Uh, last couple things. Uh, next week we are going to focus on uh, playing and relearning and getting good at Venus. Uh, it's been a long while since I played it, and I only played it once. I didn't buy it because I know it's coming back out. So uh, a friend of mine has it, and we we typically have it in the game bag when we get to our game nights, and it never comes out to the table. So we are going to play at least two games of it next week, if not a couple more, um, and really wrap our heads around that one. So I'm looking forward to the challenge of that. Uh, the week following, we're going to focus on the Terra Mystica expansion, because let me tell you, I got kind of scared to do the Terra Mystica expansion, because my friends played maybe 20 more games of Terra Mystica than me, and then they all played with the expansion about five or six times. So I feel like I'm going to just walk in and get my head shot off without even a chance at winning. So I'm getting over that fear, and I'm going to try it out because it's one of my favorite games, and I haven't tried any of the new stuff. So I'm excited to give that a go. And lastly, uh, for Lighter Fair, I got a copy of Felix the Cat in the Sack. <laughs> this game, um, I was on Twitter chatting with a friend, Todd, and... Uh, I mentioned that I don't have a lot of freezes I like, Freedom and Freeze. Um, I like Power Grid just fine. I don't actually own it, which is weird. And I like Copycat a lot. I liked ca Copycat. I thought it was pretty neat. Um, and he's like, well, have you played Felix the Cat in the Sack? It's my favorite. And I was like, no, I really haven't. And I knew it was a, on the lighter party side, but uh, now that I've played it, it's pretty adorable. So you have cats. Uh, it's kind of like if No Thanks and like a For Sale mixed or... Bibliost or something, um, that would be it. So you are trying to get positive point cats 
and you all have like a couple dogs and some negative point cats and a rabbit um, and you put four everybody puts one card into the pool and then you start a bidding war to buy the entire pool and you only reveal one card at a time as people pass you reveal one more card um, so if you pass you get a little bit of money um, and the person who has the highest bid will pay all their money and then take the entire pool of cards. Um, the dogs kind of chase away either a low cat or high cat depending on which dog it was and you count up your points at the end of the game so super light and silly very very fun. I'm super glad I have a copy because it's just it's one of those I can throw in for the the last thing of the night so we don't always play cockroach poker um, but I'm really excited to have it. Uh, I still need to try fresh fish. I've heard I'd like, I'd like that. I didn't really like landlord and um, fearsome floors and the other one that's not fearsome floors, but it's like it's in that same part of my head. <laughs> um, so I just rambled for way longer than I thought I was going to. Uh, I hope you guys are all doing really well, and I will see you later. Bye.